So here's this place in Jerusalem. It currently exists. And there used to be a lot of people that lay there because the waters would be stirred. And the first one in would be healed. Do you want to be healed? Yes, but I just don't have anyone to help me in. Get up. Pick up your mat and walk. And this marvelous deliverance, this marvelous transformation happens. This guy who had been an invalid for over 38 years, imagine not being able to walk for over 38 years. And immediately your life is so radically transformed, you jump up and you pick up your mat and you begin to walk. And then the next part of this story almost baffles me as much as the first part. So he's walking and he's carrying his mat and here come the Jews, the church leaders of the day, And instead of choosing to celebrate the fact that this person who was lame, who was an invalid, and and somebody that they had had to have seen time and time and time and time again, they knew where this person belonged. It was laying on his back, begging. And by the way, because we're at a place where we're in the middle of another feast, whether it's Passover or, or whatever, we know that there's crowds gathered in. So you got to know that these, these sick people, these, these invalids, these lame people, they're gathering in not just hopes that the water is being stirred, but understanding that this is a great time for benevolence. If the handouts are going to come in large amounts, now's the time because the crowds are going to be huge. They're not going to miss that opportunity for begging. So you know that... These church leaders, they they know this guy. They've seen him. They know where he belongs. Who told you you could carry that mat? It's the Sabbath. Really? So he responds, the guy that made me well, the guy that healed me, the guy that, that has so radically transformed my life that I am no longer flat on my back, but I'm walking right now, and you're seeing me in your dialogue. That person told me that I could. Who is this fellow that told you you could do that? You would think they would ask, who is this fellow that made you well? Who is this fellow that pulled off this amazing miracle? They didn't even care. All that mattered to them was that their dumb rule was being broken. And understand that the rule for carrying your mat was not a rule that God put in place. They put it in place. It was their own interpretation of what is work on the Sabbath. God did not say you can't carry your mat on the Sabbath. They did. They don't even care about the fact that this amazing, radical transformation has taken place in this person's life. They're mad that this guy is carrying his bed. They totally missed it. Later, Jesus finds this healed invalid at the temple. I'm in verse 14, and he says to him, See, you are well again. You're still walking. You have been delivered. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. And yet another curious factor in the story. What does this insinuate to us? It insinuates that the reason this guy was an invalid was because of sin. 
because of choices that he had made in the physical realm or in the spiritual realm, I should say, choices, sinful actions that he made in the spiritual realm affected him in the physical realm. And deliverance was holistic. And Jesus warned him, no more sinning. Or something worse may happen to you next time. Now listen, Jesus has made it very clear in other places that sin does not necessarily cause physical struggles, physical bondage, sickness. But understand, church, that it can. The dichotomy of man is, is clear. We are both spiritual and we are both physical. And they are intertwined with one another. And what we do in the physical realm will affect the spiritual realm. And what we do in the spiritual realm will affect the physical realm. It's both aspects of who we are. It's how we've been created. And Jesus seems to touch on this. See, you are well. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. And then the Jews learned that it was Jesus who had made him well. So Jesus comes to us today. And I believe that he's longing to stir the waters. I mean, if he came to you face to face right now, what question would he ask you? What is it that you have been longing for? What is it that you have been searching for? What is it that you've been trying to reach and yet you have fallen short? Just like this invalid over however many years. We know he's been invalid for over 38 years, but we don't know if he's been at that pool for that long. But he just kept falling short time and time and time again. I just don't have anyone to help me into the pool. And we see ourselves in him with one excuse after another, after another. Do you want to be made well? Yes, but... Do you want... Yes, but... I believe that the living God of all the universe, this Jesus who walks into this story and intersects with this man and even seems to change the course of history with this pool of water. That same Jesus comes to us today longing to stir the waters, longing to do His work, longing to bring His transformational work into our lives. What question would He ask you? And what would be your response? There might be some in here today that their circumstances have been so extreme, so dire, that intersecting with Jesus hasn't happened for a long time. And here you are in this place today, and the Spirit of the living God is intersecting with your soul right now. And it may be, it may be a, a, a feeling, it may be something that you haven't felt in a long, long 
long time. So much so that you couldn't even begin to know what it is that you need or what it is that you really want. And you, and you certainly couldn't even begin to know how it is that you would even be, hear his voice to even understand what question he might be asking you. That's how long it has been for you. And yet you sense him right now. And, and we see in this story that there, there wasn't even an ounce of faith in Jesus in this man, and yet this deliverance happened. And we know by Scripture that if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, which is just the, the smallest seed on the planet, that you could say to this mountain, move, and it will be moved. It's not as if you had to um, spend a lot of time gaining and garnering loads and loads of faith before you can get this kind of deliverance to happen. He's ready to do it right now. His power hasn't diminished. His power hasn't changed. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he comes to you right now. What will your response be? I just want to ask that you would close your eyes and, and just allow you and Jesus' time to take place.